वेलकम टू केमिस्ट्री एडवांस क्वेश्चन पेपर आई एम रीडिंग आउट फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन बट प्रायर टू दैट आई मस्ट टेल यू दैट द पेपर इज अवेलेबल ऑन अवर यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज सावरकर आई ए ए स्टडी सर्कल सो यू हैव टू विजिट दैट चैनल दैट इज सावरकर आई ए स्टडी सर्कल फर्स्ट सॉल्व द पेपर एंड देन ऑब्जर्व दिस एनालिसिस एंड इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी सॉल्व देन ऑब्जर्व दिस एनालिसिस first i am reading out question and then we will discuss how many statements are true poly tetra fluoro ethylene that is p t f e is a fluoro polymer used in non stick cookware second polyurethane foam is used for insulation in refrigerators dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane is used for making artificial fragrance and flavors dihydrogen monoxide is a fatal liquid and if it is consumed orally then 25 ml is sufficient to kill an adult man so let us check this uh, first that poly tetra fluoro ethylene that is ptfe in simple language it is called as teflon so it is a fluoro polymer used for non stick cookware yes your observation is there you can check out that on non stick cookware particularly the coating is given there we can find out this type of uh, stickers that is called as teflon originally the material is designed for space craft or say satellites and then it is used in the kitchen so uh, those who are having objection that why uh, we are wasting so much money on the space research so answer is here also that when we are going for space research obviously thing is that for that purpose whatever preparations are there sometimes this type of useful things are also we are getting out now second statement uh, so first statement is true second polyurethane foam is used for insulation in refrigerator yes it is uh, abbreviated as puf puf so you might have noticed or uh, you can ask your father and mother uh, that uh, in early days refrigerators were having comparatively good thickness that insulating material was used that was having good thickness but when this type of substances were discovered and they used practically in the refrigerating work the thickness of a refrigerator decreases out so this is true statement that polyurethane foam now third dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane so this is abbreviated as ddt now you are aware of this substance insecticides and pesticides it was used widely before a few years so now it is not used but yet it is insecticide and pesticide so therefore it is not used in making artificial flavor and fragrances so third statement is false fourth statement dihydrogen monoxide those who are having little bit gk intelligence they can check out dihydrogen two hydrogen and one oxygen that is water hoh is a fatal liquid so water is not fatal liquid and uh, consume orally 20 ml etc so only thing is that how we are presenting out the things that is important so here two statements are true and two statements are false so answer is b second question which of the following compound compounds is are consumed directly or indirectly orally uh, in human diet so first one nicotinamide second ascorbic acid third monosodium glutamate fourth riboflavin now uh, here we have to think first one uh, nicotinamide so don't immediately get concluded that nicotine it is uh, actually amide and then it is uh, simply called as niacin it is vitamin b3 in b complex so as it is vitamin b3 niacin it can be convert, uh, consumed ascorbic acid you are aware that is vitamin c 
monosodium glutamate abbreviated as msg wrongly called as ajinomoto actually ajinomoto is name of company uh, who manufactured this compound and in india we are calling simply the name of compound as ajinomoto so name is monosodium glutamate so those who are uh, getting food many hotels restaurants they are using this as food enhancer so that is monosodium glutamate and lastly riboflavin it is again vitamin b complex vitamin only b2 so uh, all four we can consume or many of us are consuming and therefore uh, we have to go answer as d d that is all 1 2 3 which of the following process is used third question which of the following process is used to prepare ammonia from atmospheric nitrogen in industry see keep in mind here we have mentioned clearly in industry so first is haber's process second is ornithin cycle third is bosch process and last is jaldal's uh, method so here we are going to discuss that haber's process that is conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia by reacting it with hydrogen so this process is there this is industrial process uh, particularly those who have studied out 11 standard in science stream they are aware 11 12 standard that lee chaklier's principle at that time we are discussing this process that is called as haber's process of conversion of nitrogen into ammonia this process was very much helpful for hitler during second world war uh, how go to our youtube channel and find out uh, ornithine cycle here ornithine cycle is taking place in our body to convert ammonia into urea so this is not right answer obviously answer is only one so a is correct but we are discussing bosch process bosch process is there to convert ammonia what is obtained from maybe haber cycle so that ammonia is converted into nitric acid so uh, this is called as bosch process togetherly we called it as bosch and haber's process because from air and water the german scientists were able to produce nitric acid prior to that nitric acid was prepared from a salt that is called as chili salt peter so here uh, bosch process is there but it is not used for manufacturing of ammonia and lastly k is silent i don't know english that much uh, why certain letters are silent and why they are not i don't know but this is jaldal's method uh, that is used as a uh, analytical method not for industrial preparation so uh, it is det det uh, to detect out nitrogen so here uh, answer is obviously a that is haber's process option select correct options given below first one tetra ethyl lead is used as anti knocking agent in unleaded petrol second methyl tertiary butyl ether that is mtbe is replaced by tetra ethyl lead uh, from 2020 in unleaded petrol so uh, which option is true only one only two both true both false we have to give answer uh, first one tetra ethyl lead is used as anti knocking agent uh, i want to correct this statement it is false statement uh, how we have to going to correct uh, tetra ethyl lead was used as anti knocking agent in petrol not unleaded petrol because it is tetra ethyl lead tel the petrol vehicles were emitting out uh, some part in forms of ppm but lead was emitted and that's why this is now not used if this is not used then petrol is called as unleaded petrol okay uh, somewhere around 1999 2000 along that we were having this two type of petrol available now almost all everywhere i hope in maharashtra everywhere we are getting this unleaded petrol only so uh, unleaded petrol means what 
so here this tetraethyl lead is not there so first statement is false second statement methyl tertiary butyl ether that is mtbe is replaced by tetraethyl lead reverse out tetraethyl lead is reversed by methyl tertiary butyl ether that is mtbe uh, not from 2020 prior to that only in unleaded petrol so uh, both options are false means answer is d how many statements are true 26 karat gold is the purest gold i don't know why they are making this type of arrangement uh, because simply we are giving purity in form of percentage but for gold their own standards are there may be possible some technical reasons may be there i don't know but they say 24 karat gold is equivalent to 100% pure gold all right so whenever we are carrying out percentage we have to consider 22 karat means 100% so 26 karat gold is not possible here so first statement is the false second 22 karat karat gold contains 22 part of gold and two parts of other metal yeah pure gold is soft it is of no use no use means uh, for making out ornament and all that pure gold is not that good so we have to add something and simply we are forming alloy of gold so when we are talking of 22 karat gold it is meaning is that 22 part gold and two part something other so that other we are going to discuss in same question but afterward so other metals so that uh, statement is true that means second statement is true now third cadmium gold is gold alloyed with cadmium so what i have used the word that two parts of other metal in that if cadmium is there then we are calling this as cadmium gold you are aware of cadmium we have discussed uh, in nuclear chemistry only rods of boron and cadmium they are using to control nuclear fission reaction to absorb extra neutron so you are aware of word cadmium you are aware nickel cadmium battery or nickel cadmium cell there also we have discussed so this is the true uh, so third statement is true fourth statement pure gold is the hardest among all alloys of gold no it is soft by making alloy we are converting it into hard substance so for example to hold diamond it is said that some 18 karat gold is required then that hardness is there uh, in that gold so fourth statement is again false so our answer is only two statements are right so how many statements are true so here answer is two sixth question ph plus poh is equal to you are aware ph scale here we can check out this is called as ph scale so ph plus poh is equal to 14 because ionic product of water is 14 at uh, 10 raised to minus 14 so on that basis it is calculated that ph plus poh equal to 14 so uh, answer is uh, here c seventh question pure and mary curie are able to separate out dash dash element first time from pinch blend okay now uh, i want to tell this story this uh, people uh pierre curie and mary curie they were very poor uh they were not uh, spending out money because their research work was predominantly on uranium and they were not uh, spending ready to spend money in purchasing out pure radium uh, sorry pure uranium and that's why they were purchasing out slag uh slag means what after extraction of metal whatever is remaining substance that is called as slag uh, that is some sort of uh, say we can say scrap material so like that some scrap was there uh, when we use pinch blend you are aware that pinch blend uh, that pinch blend means uh, ore of lead at that time predominantly ore of lead so they extracted uh, after extraction of this uh, lead whatever material was there from that they were extracting out uranium now they developed with help of radioactivity uh, knowledge they developed uh, Uh, instrument that is called as scintillation counter, and then on one fine day they just check out 
that after extraction of uranium, whatever the remaining material is there, is it radioactive? And they found that it is more radioactive than uranium. Lot of work carried out and they were able to separate a radioactive element which was unknown till that day. Now this uh, Mary Curie was originally from Poland and she given the name of her uh, parent nation and so they called this element as polonium. So this is the first element they are able to extract, they are able to separate from pinch plate. But after that history repeats, they check out remaining material and they found that remaining material is still radioactive. And then they carried out research. Tons of material was analyzed to obtain hardly one milligram of new element from that. It was very, very highly radioactive and therefore the name was given as radium. Okay, so two elements they discovered, one is polonium, one is radium. Now in the list, polonium is not there. So we have to give answer as radium because first time they only discovered and so this statement is also right. So uh, here we have to give answer as radium. No doubt lead and uranium is also extracted but prior to Pierre Curie and Marie Curie they were extracting out lead and uranium and so this is not thing. Plutonium was discovered in much later phase and this was not extracted. This is produced. This is synthetic element. So answer is A. Now next question, eighth question, which substance is described in the following statements? Number one, substance reacts with hydrogen chloride gas and forms white fumes. Yeah. Now uh, substance reacts with hydrogen chloride gas and form white fume. So it is a gaseous reaction between HCl and ammonia. So you can predict, uh, you can guess here ammonia may be there. Let us confirm. Substance is produced in the body as a product of metabolic activity. Yeah. In human body and various animal body, this substance is produced as product of metabolic activity that is ammonia. So this is also true. So we can go by this way, guessing. Third. Substance when dissolved in water produces weak paste. If ammonia dissolved in water, it is producing ammonium hydroxide, which is a weak paste. So this is also true. Used in Bosch process. Uh, just now we discussed that Bosch process is there to convert ammonia into nitric acid. So by all gates, substance is ammonia. So option A is right. Ninth, which substance is described in the following statements? In solid state, it is colorless or in bracket it is written as white. Okay. When added in 246 trinitrophenone, it gives yellow colored precipitate. Gives white precipitate with aqueous silver nitrate. On boiling with aqueous sodium hydroxide, it is not giving smell of ammonia. From this data, we have to find out the substance. Okay, so uh, let us check it's colorless. So it is not uh, concluding anything because colorless or white salts are n number. So I am not able to conclude anything from that. But when added with 246 trinitrophenol, uh, another name of this compound is picric acid, which is deep yellow in color. And uh, you are aware uh, that picric acid is able to precipitate out ammonium salt as well as potassium salt. So here I am going to conclude first thing the salt may be either ammonium or potassium. Okay. Next gives a white precipitate with aqueous silver nitrate. Fantastic. As you are aware that chloride salts are giving white color precipitate because they are giving here uh, silver chloride. So if chloride salt is there, then white color precipitate is there with silver nitrate. So 
uh, we can conclude negative part here that is chlorine or chloride is there so i am con considering now it is either ammonium chloride or potassium chloride now last thing on boiling with aqueous sodium hydroxide it is not giving smell of ammonia if salt contains ammonia uh, ammonium then on mixing with noh not necessary to boil just on mixing and little bit warming also you can smell ammonia but here on boiling also no smell of ammonia that means ammonium radical is not there that means potassium is there and so name of compound is potassium chloride so check out here in the list option b now 10th question uh, in this question a uh, minor mistake is there in the answer sheet uh, because a uh, statement which statement is true like that question is asked and options are given as 1 2 3 4 so uh, we have to correct it so i am just uh, giving you number of correct uh, sorry uh, total correct statements here first hard water contains magnesium and calcium salts true uh, don't get confused with hard water and heavy water heavy water is d2o whereas in hard water salts like calcium and magnesium are present uh, because of that test is something different for that water again when you are applying soap not synthetic detergent uh, soap that is uh, we can say toilet soap or bathing soap like that then uh, we are not getting uh, foam or foam is removed immediately soap is removed immediately so hard water contains magnesium and calcium salt answer is true because these magnesium and calcium salts are reacting with soap soap is sodium salt of fatty acid instead of that they are producing magnesium salt of fatty acid or calcium salt of fatty acid which is not having property of soap a uh, little bit yellow color is there and therefore if you are washing clothes with this type of soap in case of hard water then instead of getting cloth white it is getting having tinge yellow that is the problem of hard water iron exchanger resins are used to make water soft yeah there are certain resins uh, synthetic polymers are there they are capable of exchanging out resin and in industries we are using huge iron exchanger cylinders so that the hard water can be converted into soft water then we have to recondition that uh, container by adding hydrochloric acid uh, and uh, sodium hydroxide we are reconditioning that columns now third reverse osmosis is a helpful process for desalination of water this is also true it is costly but uh, helpful in case of that we have to pure the water then instead of boiling and recondensing that means distillation so for uh, it is cheaper than distillation but it is not that cheap also hard water is converted into soft water by using some chelating complexes yeah certain chelating agents are there usually they are categorized under name calgon uh, they are forming complex with calcium and magnesium salts as a result they are forming precipitate so if you are adding that substance in hard water after some time you will get precipitate we filter it we are getting pure water but costly so uh, all four statements are true here so uh, if i am saying uh, which statement is true so i have to give answer as all four that is the thing thanks for observing this video